if we have produced speech signals, we might be interested in analyzing them. Um, and in fact, there is a multitude of different ways to analyze speech signals. In the following, I will just present three examples. And the first one is one which you already know, namely the spectral analysis of speech signals. Um, there are different ways for calculating the spectrum of a speech signal, but the most uh, efficient one is to directly calculate the Fourier transform. In practical applications, we will more or less only work with digital representations of speech signals. That is, we can uh, calculate a limited time analysis of the speech signal, which is equivalent to a discrete Fourier transform, DFT, and you see the corresponding equation illustrated behind me. The spectral analysis leaves all information in the speech signal, both about the excitation and about the vocal tract shaping. But in some instances, we are interested in separating these two parts of the information in the speech signal. And this is possible with the second way of analyzing speech signal, the so-called capstral analysis. Let's assume that we have a speech signal which has a spectrum G, which is composed of two parts, namely the spectrum of the excitation signal multiplied with the transfer function of the vocal tract. And as you know from linear time invariant systems, we just have to multiply these two. Now, um, we can separate these two constituents here with a function which makes this multiplication a sum of two constituents, and this function is actually the logarithm. In this case, we apply the natural logarithm to the basis of E, and we apply it to the absolute value of this complex spectrum. And then we can separate this multiplication into a sum of two logarithms here. We are still in the frequency domain, but in a kind of logarithmic frequency domain. And then we can transform that one back into the time domain using another discrete Fourier transform. Actually, we are not really in the time domain because we have calculated this logarithm before, but from a unit point of view, this value here corresponds to time. It's actually called the frequency of the signal. And this frequency is then calculated as another Fourier transform of the logarithm of the absolute value of the speech signal which you had here, which then can be decomposed into these two logarithms. And as the Fourier transform is a linear operation as well, we can decompose that into two additive parts, one corresponding only to the excitation signal and another one corresponding only to the vocal tract. We call this C a capstrom and you see that there is a change of the letters actually in the word spectrum which lead to a capstrom like the frequency is a change of the letters of the word frequency. But we should be aware that this has the unit of a time. We can have a look into the capsule analysis by analyzing either a periodic segment of speech or a non-periodic noisy segment of the speech, which has been smoothly um, windowed out from a continuous speech signal. If we do a capsule analysis of this periodic part, which you see in the middle here, you see two constituents, namely one constituent at the low frequencies corresponding to high frequencies. This is the part which stems from the vocal tract. And then there is another little peak here, which corresponds to the excitation signal. It happens actually at a time which is equivalent to 8 milliseconds. 8 milliseconds correspond to 125 hertz. So this is the peak which corresponds to the fundamental frequency of this periodic speech signal. If you do the analysis for the noisy speech here, 
we only see the contribution of the vocal tract, but we do not see a strong contribution of the excitation signal. Actually, it's more noise-like in all this area. And you can also see the corresponding spectra in the, on the right-hand side of those panels here. The capsule analysis thus helps us to separate the information of the excitation signal from the information of the vocal tract. And there's a second way of separating these two pieces of information, um, which is based on linear predictive analysis or LPC analysis, because this linear predictive principle is very much used in speech coding. So we talk about linear predictive coding of speech signal. As the basis for this, we use a assumed very simple process of speech production with an excitation signal and a linear filtering which synthesizes our speech signal in the human body. So this is the spectrum of the speech signal. And what we can now do is to analyze by putting an inverse of this filter here at this place. So we replace this by an analysis filter, put the speech signal through it, and ideally we would get the spectrum of the excitation signal at the output. If we realize the vocal tract filter in the way I had illustrated it before, that is with this transversal filter in the feedback loop, then we can realize the analysis filter by an equivalent construction here, where this is in a feedforward loop, and we have a minus sign here, and then we should also be aware of the difference in the amplitude which you see here. This analysis just does the inverse of the vocal tract filtering and tries to generate a signal which is more or less equivalent to the excitation signal happening here inside the human. Of course, this is just a model. So in the end, you will find a signal here which has a relatively broad band wide spectrum where most of the information is contained actually in the coefficients of this filter here, which describes then also the verbal information which you have put through the vocal cavity onto the speech signal. So we have three ways of analyzing speech signals. The spectral analysis, doing a frequency analysis of the speech spectrum, the so-called capsule analysis, separating the excitation from the vocal tract shaping, and then the linear predictive analysis, which also does a separation by calculating the inverse of the vocal tract filter in this place here.